Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with the three-step system that will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interests. And this is Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer, where we come together to read God's Word, to um, pray for your concerns, and give you some encouragement as you go out of the door. So I want to thank each and every one of you who are following me on these different platforms. And we're going to have to pray with this technology because it's acting a little skippy there. But um, I know with your prayers, we will get through this. So I want to um, thank all of you who are watching me via Facebook Live, Periscope, um, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. I mean, just about any way you can watch, especially my website, which is www.wisecourtship.com. And of course, before I get started, I want to welcome those who are already in the room. And Lakeisha, I don't know what you do to become first, honey, but you're always the first person in the room. So I thank God so much for you. You are my sister. And I um, thank God that you are so supportive. So welcome, welcome. She's watching us via Facebook Live. And we have Slicky Fangs. Good to see you watching us via Twitch. Good to see you on today. And so um, thank you, Lakeisha, for sharing this broadcast. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, let's see. Slicky uh, Fangs is following us via um, Twitch. And she's saying hello to you, Lakeisha. <laughs> She's saying hello to you. I don't know if you can see her comments. But anyway, um, we are going to get into this word right here. So um, have your um, iPads, your iPhones, your Bibles, or any place where you can get the Word of God, because we're going to be skipping around. And if you don't have it, I will put it up on the screen too. Um, oh, you can't. Yeah, because I think uh, I can see all of you guys' comments, but you guys can't see each other's unless you're on the same uh, platform. But it's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get into uh, this lesson on today. Um, and I'm going to be skipping around in scripture quite a bit, but I will put it on the screen so that you can follow along with me. And today we're going to talk about can church members go to hell? Can church members go to hell? And even if you're not a church member, this is a great question also for you. The reason why I picked that, the reason why I picked that is, um, and that's okay. She said she spelled your name wrong and she's sorry about that, but that's okay. Uh, I know Lakeisha, she's like, you know, she's full of love. So, um, and so reason why I picked this topic, can church uh, members go to hell? Because many people go to the church. They're very faithful to the church. Um, some even tithe and give their money. They come every Sunday. Um, they have family members who went before them and now they are faithful. But church membership does not mean that you will go to heaven, okay? <laughs> church membership will not do that. Church membership does not mean that you're saved. You are part of a church 
because you feel compelled to go out of your love that you have for Jesus Christ in your heart. So let's look at some scriptures, okay? Let's look at some of those. All right, so I'm going to be reading from 1 John 5, 11, 1 through 13, and it says, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So you can sit in the church and not have the son because you never took the time to have a um, special relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. You compel to the Christ to uh, compel to come to church because the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Um, and so that is something that you will do automatically because you would love just like when you buy your favorite hair product or you you got something that helped you lose weight and you're like, oh, my God, this is a good thing. And you start telling everybody that's the same way when we are in church. We tell um, what, uh, one another about the goodness of God. We worship corporately, but that does not take away what we do separately at all but you can be sitting in the church and not worshiping right has anybody been to a concert and everybody else is up dancing and singing and somebody else is just sitting there you can sit there and still not be a part of it and so that's why we want to be very very careful to think that um just because we are sitting in the church means that we have a relationship with christ yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Slicky Payne. She said, why would I not um, be in the church of Christ? And, you know, that's that's a quite good question. Right. That's a good question. And hopefully we're addressing that today. Good to see you, Jermaine. It's been a long time. Good to see you on today. So let's go to the next scripture. First of all, you must be able you must be saved or what we call a believer. This is how you go to heaven. This is how you um, admit hell altogether. You must be saved or a believer. So let's look at John 3, 18. Most of us are familiar with John 3, 16 about for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him shall have, um, shall not perish, but have, um, but have eternal life. We know that scripture, but many of us don't know this one. John 3, 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. We cannot send you to hell. A preacher can't send you to hell. God God is not sending you to hell. You send your own self because of that scripture tells us when you don't believe you condemned yourself already. Yes, my gosh. And so now let's look at another scripture here. Okay, we know that we must be saved or we must be a believer. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So there's no magic potion, guys. There's no by laying of hands. There's no uh, paying extra money. There's no doing good works. It is just simply saying with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That is just a simple, simple thing. And if you can do that, then you will be saved. You have to declare it and you've got to believe it. You got to believe it and you got to declare it. You got to do both of those things um, to be saved. It's right there in the scripture. So um, can church members go to hell? Yes. If they have not um, taken the steps to be saved, yes, they can. Listen to this. Save does not mean church membership. Those are two different things. Those are two different things. Okay, having a relationship. When you save, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can sit in the church and have never prayed the sinner's prayer, never um, declared with your mouth, or you may have declared with your mouth and you didn't really believe it in your heart. Okay, or you may believe it in your heart and you scurred to say it out loud to anybody. Y'all know how that is. You got some friends, but they try to act like they don't know you. Those are those really not your friends. It's not that hard to figure it out. We get cute when it comes to the Bible because we're like, well, God is love and, and he is. Yes, he is. But some things is just common sense. If you divide, the Bible says you deny me here, I'll deny you in front of my, my father. As simple as that. You don't know me. I don't know you. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that is uh, the next, the, the, the other point that I want to say. Save does not mean church membership. So let's look at the scripture that backs that up. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? I taught on this last week. So if you miss this, I taught on this scripture last week. Um, if I caught, I entitled it the scariest scripture in the Bible, the scariest scripture in the Bible. It just released at three o'clock today on my YouTube channel. So you can go there. Let me see if I can pull up my YouTube channel link really, really quick. You can go there and you can watch it on my YouTube channel and it's called the scariest scripture in the Bible. Okay. And you can check it out there. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's true. Um, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go on to the next thing that's that uh, what we we're talking about. We said that um, that um, save does not mean church membership. If y'all you guys have not um, connected right now, I'm just talking plainly to you. I'm just talking plainly. There's different modes I go in. When I'm teaching, y'all know I go in when I'm in person. I love to go in. But sometimes, you know, you just got to settle down and hear this. For some of you, you know this and it's refreshing. And for some of you, you're learning this for the first time. So I want to remind you that saved does not mean church membership. I didn't finish reading this scripture. I said, um... Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform miracles? But then it goes on and says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. So you could be in the church, you could be serving, you could be doing all kind of um wonderful things. You could be prophesying. You could be uh, laying hands on people. You could be driving out demons, performing miracles, and never know God. And he's, he will say to you, I, depart from me. I, I've never known. I never knew you. And so, yes, that is a very scary scripture. You want to read, you want to watch that broadcast from last week um, where I talk about that further. So let's talk about the proof that you are saved. Because some of you said, well, I am, but I need proof. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm not sure now. Here's some of the proof that you are saved. One, you of course, we talked about that prayer. And a lot of times we leave it at that. You said the prayer and that's it. But did it really take? <laughs> I believe you if you say you saved, you saved. I mean, I don't know what's going on in your heart, but this will help you. This will be a measuring stick on whether or not you are on the right path and you have really, truly um, allowed God to come into your heart. One is that you, number one, you will trust God alone. You will trust God alone. You will trust Jesus alone. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so you are not being swayed by other teachings that you can get there by your works or you can get there because your father was the first person to lay the brick in the church and your mother made the first cake. All of those silly things that we think will get us in, that's not what's going to get us in. That's right. That's exactly. You you teaching over here, Jermaine. You said just because they shake the past the hand does not mean they say. And that is a symbol of sometimes our rituals that we have. And those are all good. I'm not saying don't get rid of them. And, you know, we shake the pastor's hand and we go up to the front and all of that kind of stuff. That all has its place. But you still have to make sure that you have literally allow Jesus to come into your life and that you um, trust Jesus and Jesus alone, not the pastor and the pastor has his place, not your mother and your father. They got their place, but you have to trust when the bottom, when the rubber meets the road, when you get to the bottom line, you have to trust Jesus and Jesus alone. Okay. So if your mother sways, you don't sway with her. All right. So it's, it's really, really important. You have to know because Jesus says, I am the way. And the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by, through me. And some people think my mother's way is the way. I love my mother. And she's very wise. But I I realize her wisdom comes from God. And as long as she's on the path of God, she's saying right. She's doing right. But when she gets off that path, she's wrong. And I love my mother. And you have to have that type of wisdom with God. So you will trust Jesus alone. Number two, you grow to hate sin. You grow to hate it. You may not hate it at first, 
You may be slow to, you know, slow as you in increments get there, but you get to the point where you hate sin. Okay. Here's the scripture for that. Psalm 97 10 says, let those who love the Lord hate evil for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. I know I thought we we're not supposed to hate, but you will hate people, not hate the people, but hate the sin. You will hate the sin of murder. You will hate the sin of injustice. Oh my goodness. Exactly. You said, well, what you got up here? Let's say cause that form of ungodly is bow bowing down to pull. You listen, we don't bow down. I think I put a scripture up about um that uh something to the fact that we we um we rather honor God than human beings. And that's at the bottom line, that's what it is. We do respect people, we respect them in their um pers um perspective places. But we do not bow down to them as if they are God. And thank you for that because some of us are following leaders right now. Everything they say is yes and amen. But that is not true, guys. Only person that everything they say is yes and amen is God. God alone. That takes us back to number one, that you will trust Jesus alone. But also, number two, you will grow to hate sin. Okay, You hate injustice. You hate racism. You hate sexism. You hate ageism. You hate that because you know what? You know God hates it because it is evil. Somebody say it is evil in the chat box. Number three is when you get proof that you are saved, you will see, number three, you will seek to be uh, to obey God. I don't know why I got seek to be obey God. <laughs> you will seek to obey God. You will seek to obey him. Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's why learning God's word is important. That's why sitting in this Bible study is important. Thank you guys who are watching me um, on, on different other platforms that I did not mention. I see the numbers going up. Good to see each and every one of you. That's why it's important to know God's word so that you will not sin against him. Will we be perfect? No, we will never, ever, ever be perfect. Okay. But we, we are trying to do our very best. We are trying to do our extreme best in this world, uh, in this life with, with, with what God has given us. So you seek to obey God, to listen to his words. And by the way, there's many more scriptures for all of these points, okay? It's many, many more. And you can find them on your own. I'm just giving you a snippet, okay, of things. Number four is you will confess your sins. You will know that you're saved because you will confess your sins. The scripture says in 1 John 1, 8, that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So when you got someone, especially saying that they're Christian and, oh, I didn't sin and I'm perfect and I don't do anything wrong, you are deceiving yourselves, the Bible says. Yes, indeed, you are deceiving yourselves. In other words, you are lying to yourself. Not only lying to everybody else, lying to God, but you're definitely lying to yourselves. So we all have sinned, the Bible says, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all of us have made mistakes and all of us are far from what God wants us to be. Even if you don't do the sins that people can see, okay, if you got them hidden sins because you, you look clean on the outside. And because it looks like you don't do anything wrong or because it's not the sin of drinking and drugging and, and fighting and cussing and killing, but it is something that, you know, a bad attitude or, or it's some kind of ism, sexism, racism, ages. Maybe it's something that somebody can't see. Maybe it's the thoughts that you have in your mind. We all have sinned and we are far from what God wants us to be. So we confess our sins daily daily so that we can clean ourselves or God can clean us up and we can move on and try our best not to do it again. Number five, number five is, and this is the last point I'm going to give you for today. Number five of knowing how you are saved is you bear good fruit. You bear good fruit. And um, it's so many scriptures on this, but I'm going to give you two of them. Um, Matthew 7, 16a says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Talking about disciples of Jesus Christ. We'll know who you are by your fruit. Good to see you, uh, Mike. Good to see you on today. Thank you for joining us via Facebook. Good to see you. You will know a believer 
by the fruits that they bear, okay? Well, you may say, what in the world are you talking about with fruits? Well, if you plant an apple, uh, put an apple seed in the ground, you expect to get an apple tree. You don't expect to get oranges or just leaves. You expect to get apples after a period of time, you know, the duration, the time for maturation and all of that. You expect to get apples on the tree, all right? You don't expect to get something totally different. And so the same thing is we as Christians, we are like a tree, okay? And we are to bear fruit. You say, well, what kind of fruit? I'm not going to bear apples. Well, no, if you look in, um, in Corinthians and other parts of the Bible, it tells us about the fruit of the spirit, knowing that you actually have the spirit of God in you, you will bear fruit like love, joy, peace, long suffering, um, self-control, all of those types of things. And when someone says that they're saved and they don't bear those fruits, you need to check yourself. Okay, I didn't put the scripture on up here talk, that talk, teaches us to examine ourselves. I, I edit that, that one out, but we do need to examine ourselves, as the Bible says, to make sure you are on the right track. I wanted to give you a second scripture on um, bearing fruit, and that one is 1 John 3, 18 through 19, that says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. So we can't just be about, you know, just speaking uh, what we ought to do. OK, we're not just going to love, say, I love you. And that's it. We got to show it in words. OK, we are not in word. We just got to show it in action. I'm sorry. We don't just show it in words or just our beautiful speech, but we got to show it in action okay so the ways to know that you are saved is one you will trust jesus alone two you will grow to hate sin three you seek to obey god four you confess your sins and five you bear good fruit and we uh church members can go to hell you can go if you did not believe if you did not confess if you did not believe listen you may be watching me right now saying, how in the world am I going to be saved? Let me repeat this to you one more time. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Go ahead and say that if you want to be saved. Say, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. So you got to believe that Jesus, uh, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He is God's son. You've got to believe that and you've got to confess it. You can't be incognito. You can't be secret agent. You've got to be willing to stand and declare that anywhere that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so you could be in the church and you could be having a good time every Sunday. Somebody say every Sunday. <laughs> you could be having a wonderful time and miss heaven because you have not established a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I pray that that helped you. And we're going to go ahead and pray for your concerns on today. And then I'm going to give you a word of encouragement and then I'm going to let you go. All right. So let's go before the Lord in prayer and please put uh, in the chat box what you are thankful for. And when I put my glasses back on, then you can put your prayer requests up at that time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up, God. We just give you all honor, glory, and praise. We salute you, Father. We bow down before you, knowing that you are the maker and creator of all things. God, first of all, forgive us. Forgive us for all of the things that we have done wrong. We realize, as your word says, that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And God, you said in your word that we, we would confess our sins, if we would tell you about our sins, and we would admit that we've done wrong, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, you will forget it, you will forgive it, and you will forget it. And God, so now we come before you with all the things that we have done wrong. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us if we thought that we could get into heaven without having a relationship with you. Forgive us for not doing the things that you asked of us. Forgive us for not being as kind as we could be, for not being as faithful as we ought to be. God, we just love you and we praise you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We 
We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you, O oh God, that we're in our right mind on today. We know where we are in this present time, this present place. God, we just thank you for um, providing for us in a pandemic and sustaining us in a pandemic. God, we do. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. God, we go ahead and we pray for all of the bereaved families uh, due to this pandemic. Those who we've lost, even without the pandemic, we just lost along the way in 2021. God, we just um, pray that we, you will um, bring us through uh, this year and allow us and, and, and awaken us to the things that we can celebrate. God, we pray for the Wise Courtship family, all the individuals who come onto the various Wise Courtship broadcasts, come to the conferences, the virtual uh, settings, oh God, and all of the ways they connect to learn about relationships. We pray for those who are hurting right now. We pray for those who are yearning right now. We pray for those who want people in their lives and who want a, a substantial relationships, oh God. So we pray for them on today. God, I pray for Judy St. Pierre and her son, uh, who is battling cancer, brain cancer, I believe, God. And so we pray that you touch uh, him, even as people think that he may be nearing the end or things are over. God, I believe that you are a miracle working God. And so, God, we touch and agree right now over the healing, over his body. God, we just know that you are able to do it. But we also know that you have a plan for our lives, God. So we submit to your will, God. We know that you're sovereign, but we also know that you're able. God, we pray um, over each and every individual that's on this broadcast, God. We thank them for how they contribute to this broadcast each and every day. We pray for their individual homes and every individual within that home. God, you know what they stand in the need of, oh God. as they Go ahead and raise your hand. As they raise their hands, oh God, fill them now with your Holy Spirit, God. Fill them with your presence. God, as they raise their hands, oh God, they are saying that they surrender everything to you. Their finances, oh God, their emotions, their physical being, their, their ailments, their situations, oh God, their circumstances. We lift our hands to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for, um, I'm going to pray for Mike Maldo again. We prayed for him last week, oh God, but we know that uh, sometimes we just need to keep praying, putting the person's name before you, God. We don't know what it is, but God, we know you are able. You are able to do anything. Somebody put in the chat box, anything. You're able to do anything but fail. And God, we just pray for those who are unable to put their prayer requests up through the chat box. Possibly it was too private. Uh, possibly it was uh, they didn't want to share it, you know, publicly. But whatever it is, oh God, we know that your answer, whether it's yes, no, or wait a minute, will be better than what we've ever expected. God, we also pray. That's right. That's right. I did pray for him last week. We pray also for Sydney. Sydney Harris, who's in the hospital. We thank you for bringing him out of surgery, oh God. We thank you for that. We honor you, God, for that. And God, we pray that you continue to be with him in his healing process, oh God, because we believe in total healing. We believe in turnaround. Somebody put turnaround in the chat box. We believe you can turn it around in the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, oh God. And we pray, amen, amen, and amen. So thank you guys so much for uh, that and, and joining me in prayer. And I just want to give you a little encouragement as we go out of the door. Um, many people have said 2021 has been a night, uh, a year from hell itself. But you know, um, there is so much, even when you're going through. Somebody hear me today. And if you haven't shared this broadcast, go ahead and share it by touching right down there. Go ahead and share that broadcast. Listen. Even with a year like 2021, even if you're having the roughest of times, there's always something to celebrate. There's always something to be thankful for. Can you can you put in the chat box what you're thankful for, please? There's always something to be thankful for. There's always something to bless God for. Because when you think you are really going through, you know, during this pandemic, many people are having a hard time putting on a mask. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the situation is. But so many people have problems. I mean, you ask them to put on a mask, it's like you ask them to kill their mama. 
But we talked about whether we got proof of whether we're saved or not. And one thing with Christians is that we know to be selfless, not selfish, but selfless. We know how to put um, others before we put um, put ourselves. And <clears throat> very often we want to put ourselves up high and leave and put our feet on other people. But, you know, some people have a hard time putting on masks. And one nurse was saying that, you know, it's one of the selfish things because you're not even thinking about how hard they have to work in those emergency rooms, in those COVID units, when they're trying to help keep people alive. And it's so stressful for them and it's so hard for them. And if they all walked out, we'd be throwing our hands up. We'd be wondering what we're going to do. And we would say, oh my gosh, this is horrible that they walked out on us. And so we have to learn to be grateful. I'm so grateful I could put on a mask and not be lying in a COVID unit. And I want to say too, many of you guys did not notice, but my youngest son was diagnosed with COVID-19. I thank God that he brought him through. We were we were just praying and, and, and wondering, but we just kept praying and we kept believing, even when he was starting to show some signs that it may not work out to our favor, but we thank God he brought him through. And we love God for that. And you just never know what people are going through. But I'm always cognizant of giving God praise and giving God honor for all the things he has done because he doesn't have to do it. It doesn't have to be that way. And while you are complaining with that same mouth, you can you can open up your mouth and say, God, I thank you. You can lift your hands up and think about all the things that have gone right. I was listening to a woman's testimony this morning, and I'm about to end. I was listening to a woman's testimony this morning, and she talked about how she uh, had a set of twins that were born early, and they died. And then she, um, the next day, her house burned down. And then later, after she healed from that or, or was able to move along, not totally, you know, sometimes you, you don't get over those things. She had another set of twins and they died. Is anybody listening to me? And after that, her son, 10 years old, was uh, shot and killed. And so you can complain about a lot of things. But when you hear other people's story, you find out how blessed you really are. I want you to think about that. We talked about today. Can church members go to hell? They can if they don't believe in Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you to get a relationship with Jesus Christ and start to show evidence in your life and begin to bless God each and every day because you don't have to be here. Every time you open up your eyes and see a brand new day, you ought to give him thanks. Well, I've got to go, but I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control. God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Mm -hmm.